assignment to hear from you. You know, I've been part of uh, uh, graduating classes before on the other hand, uh, where I received the diploma. And um, one of the things that I remember is that I remember right now. So the attention span is probably so uh, minute right now, uh, and they exhaust the entire from partying and not sleeping. I think they don't uh, remember everything that, you say. Well, see, that's the thing. I want to I make sure that it's that it's uh, it's light, it's tight, uh, that I don't that I don't overdo it. Um, you know, I want to I want this to be a celebration for them. I don't want this to be a lesson. You know, I want this to be something that they uh, look back on fondly. You know, I, I want that. I want to meet that. I want. I want to meet that fun. I want. Um, you know, I want to connect. I want. I want this to be more uh, uh, interactive rather than me talking at them. Uh, we're gonna have fun. We're gonna have to. We're gonna have to see. Uh, we will be watching and rolling. So, uh, you have an amazing family history, coming from. You're part Jewish. You, you're you're a rainbow of cultures, aren't you? With Holocaust. <laughs> Uh, victims in your family as well. Talk about that. You're, you're, um, you're the world. Well, you, yes, you, you, yes. You see the world. You know, I, I am um, I'm very fortunate, very blessed to have a, a rich family background. Uh, my father being from Ghana, my mother being German. Um, the whole Holocaust thing is, 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 has been misconstrued a little bit. Mm-hmm. My, my grandmother um, is partially Jewish. Uh, which makes me partially Jewish. Um, we were raised in a very open household in terms of religion. Uh, we weren't uh, practicing Judaism. Um, so it was very, very, uh, we're very inclusive. Uh, my mother taught us about everything from Islam to Buddhism to Christianity. She wanted us to sort of uh, be informed and educated and make our own decisions later on in life. Um, and that turned us into very spiritual beings, um, which, which I like. Um, yeah, but it's it's an asset, you know, to have uh, such a rich culture. And, you know, the, the Ghanaian side of my father is also very rich in culture and heritage. And, and I try to, you know, I try to pass them along to my kids. And they, they speak three languages, and I always travel with them um, all to Germany and maybe in Africa and everywhere. Um, I think it's important because it, it uh, really enriches the character and personality of the person. You know? I want to raise my kids to be you know, well-rounded. Um, Consider it nice and respectful human beings. I'm sure it will be. And you're here in Harlem. I know you live in Atlanta, but do you. No, actually, we live in LA. Oh, you live in LA? I'm yeah. sorry. So, oh, you live in LA. Yeah, I live in LA. <laughs> so, when you come to Harlem, do you see how it's changed over the years? Oh, absolutely. Harlem, Harlem is such a, uh, an amazing uh, sort of center of, you know, Diverse culture now. Um, it's been influenced by so many, uh, you know, African American artists and, and, and you know, social and, and political trailblazers uh, over the years. I mean, uh, African American African American history is really rooted really here in Harlem. Uh, so every time I come, I enjoy going to the restaurants and I enjoy walking down the street and, and talking to people. And, and uh, it's it's amazing how it's changed over the years. But that's just the sound of the times, you know. Um, Everything is getting more inclusive. Everything is getting more diverse, and Harlem is you no know, exception. Yeah, everything is sort of like you. That's <laughs> right. Sort of very Harlem is me. <laughs> everything is going global, you know. Let's talk a bit about your career. Uh, you've been wildly successful in so many different arenas. Usually, when people are named most beautiful by people, they often say they're embarrassed by it. What was your take on it? I was embarrassed by it. You know, I, I was, I was, I was flattered. Mm-hmm. I can't take credit for it, and you know, I got to give credit to my mother, and my dad. But uh, you know, it was it was fun. It was it was certainly an honor to be included in that exclusive club. Um, but that was like a hundred years ago. I know, so, I know, I know. I know. So the older I get, the better I used to look. <laughs> yeah, no, it's true. You do feel more confident, right? The older you get. But what about all the different shows that you've done, from uh, Soul Food to now? With the, how is that going? It's going great. You know, this industry is very fickle, and there's ups and downs, and, and I think you have to, uh, first of all, figure out that uh, you have to live your life. You have to set down priorities that are away from, from the industry, and that's the only way to really survive it, because if you make your happiness and joy uh, depending on uh, getting a 
phone call from somebody who knew you, then then you're gonna be uh, mm-hmm. unhappy most of the time. Yeah. Uh, and I've and I've uh, I've managed to do that. You know, I'm, I'm all about my family, my wife, and my kids, and I have a lot of uh, entrepreneurial interests and uh, running foundations. Certainly, a full-time job as well. Um, I love to travel, see the world. I mean, this this business has has afforded me a lot of perks, a lot of great things as well. Um, so I'm very blessed. Uh, I don't forget that. And um, you know, I'm looking forward to just doing other different things. You know, I want to go back on the stage and I'll do other different movies. Will you see you on Broadway? Uh, well, the last time was 2008, so I think that's been six years, yeah. Um, yeah, I would be open to it. You know, Broadway was a great time for me. Uh, um, I'm going to watch my life. I'm going to do a the theater as well. I'm going to do a theater as you know, as such a devoted husband and father, talk to me about your children. I know you have Sophie and Nicholas are nine and seven. Yeah. Uh, they're my pride and joy, uh, my true uh, legacy. Uh, love to spend time with them. It's, it's, it's amazing to watch them turn into uh, just independent human beings before your very eyes. Um, Edith challenged me, uh, made me a, a, a man. And I just try to be the best father I can. Uh, I'm not trying to be their friend. I'm trying to be their, their model, their, their, their father, their, um, their guide, in a way. And um, I enjoy every minute because it's not cliche when people say, you know, time goes by so quickly. And I really try to cherish every moment. Right, and I know your daughter has some challenges as well. How has that helped you better the way as a dad? Um, you know, at first it's a shock, and there's it's a lot of pain associated with uh, a, a special needs situation like my daughter's. But uh, we learn from her. You know, for her, this is her norm. This is her life. So uh, who are we to be devastated every day when she's a happy, go lucky child with a big smile on her face who, who deals with it uh, like we deal with other challenges? So um, she's taught me a lot. She's she's really made me. turn into something that's that's really great because we've been able to uh, start the Center for Spine Bifida Research and Prevention in Atlanta and uh, touch a lot of people and, and worldwide try to push for um, fortification of flour and to, to reduce the numbers of birth defects worldwide. And so it's, it's become a really great thing in our all because of her. That's awesome. And I assume you're talking to a group of future nurses. Mm-hmm. You have a special affinity for nurses because I'm sure they were right by your side during some challenging times, yeah, right? And as you will see in the speech. Yeah, I figured you were going to tie those in. That's mm-hmm. awesome. Last question for you. You're also into fashion, right, with James Brown? Mm-hmm. Talk to me about that. Uh, fashion has always been a part of, of, uh, of my life. Um, and growing up in Germany, was always very tall and broad, and I could never fit anything off the rack. So my brother and I figured out a way how to uh, make custom clothing like this suit available for everybody. So we we, um, we figured out a way to to uh, sort of own a price range that everybody can afford. So uh, to make you know shirts, shirts, jeans, suits uh, available for everybody um, because everybody has to compromise when it comes to buying off the rack. Different bodies, short, tall, and long, and uh, to be able to to be able to for a man to, to put a suit on that actually fits, you know, it ups your confidence, makes you feel good, comfortable. Um, it's like for a woman buying new shoes, okay. it makes you that. And so, the world of outfit has been really successful in that. Um, a lot of people are now uh, turning to our product um, because it's so affordable. Yeah, and talk, talk. What's the label? The label. World of outfit. Alpha. That's awesome. What's behind that name? Alpha is A L F A, affordable luxury for all. So again, it's uh, it's the luxury of custom clothing for everybody. And all you have, have to do is go on the site. Right. You have to go on the site, pick pick your fabrics, you design your own suit. There's a measuring tape that teaches you how to measure yourself. You put in your email code, and then 25 days later you can just stuff in the mail. It's very easy. Made to order. That's awesome. Yes. Okay, well, listen, thank you so much. I'm looking forward thank to you. seeing your speech before the nurses. Thank you.